Good evening, Living Word Church. Thanks for joining us again this evening for another exciting edition of Living Word Live. Our first couple of service have been received very well with large attendances online. Thanks also to those who sent in their candid photos of what you were wearing to church last Sunday morning. We will print those in our PCH newsletter at the end of the month. I was not surprised to notice how many dogs we had in attendance in church last Sunday. However, it did not appear to me that any of them were paying much attention. May want to work on that. In my 23 years of foreign missionary ministry, I had to get used to having dogs wander into our services. I even had one dog respond to an altar call one night. After one of my fiery messages, as I pleaded fervently with the sinners to please come and give their hearts to the Lord, an old mangy dog wandered in off of the street. He sauntered down the middle aisle and plopped himself down right in front of the pulpit and began to scratch himself. I think that when he heard me saying, all of you please come, I think he thought I was saying, all you fleas come. Well, the congregation laughed so hard at that scene that I had no option but to laugh along with them and quickly dismiss the service. However, you will not get rid of me quite so quickly or so easily this evening. My message is entitled, Real People Making a Real Difference. In our society, when you're trying to sell a product, it sells better if you insert the word real on somewhere on the label. I would venture to say that we could convince a lot more people to give their hearts to the Lord if we would simply convince them that we and the Lord are the real deal. Real people making a real difference. Scripture text is found in Matthew chapter 23. Verses 27 and 28. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear as people righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. The story is told of a zoo that was noted for their great collection of different animals. Well, one day the gorilla died, and so to keep up the appearance of a full range of animals, the zookeeper hired a man to wear a gorilla suit and uh, fill in for the dead animal. Well, it was his first day on the job, and the man didn't really know how to act like a gorilla, and as he tried to move convincingly, he got too close to the wall of the enclosure and tripped and fell into the lion exhibit. He began to scream, convinced that his life was over, until the lion came up and spoke to him, Be quiet, or you're going to get us both fired. Well, now, if you didn't get that, uh, text me, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you the interpretation. We're talking this evening about real people making a real difference. Armed with hidden cameras, I'm told that a Dateline NBC program depicted what goes on behind the scenes as some businesses, and uh, it was incredible. A couple of the salesmen had no problem lying to potential customers. They went out of their way to cover up any problems with the merchandise they were selling. I couldn't help but wonder what kind of a story they would uncover if they installed hidden cameras in the church. What would the secret tape look like if they also shot some film when churchgoers were in their cars at their jobs or in their homes. It would be quite a story, wouldn't it? 
I can see the headlines now. Christians who play charades or pretenders in the pews. It would confirm what many already believe, that the church is full of people who are not real. It's difficult to believe Christianity is true when some of its followers lead such contradictory lives. It reminds me of the man who told the pastor that he doesn't go to church because there are so many hypocrites there. Well, the wise pastor responded by saying, Oh, don't let that stop you. There's always room for one more. We grow tired of people saying one thing and living something completely the opposite. Jesus used the word hypocrite. Now, according to the dictionary, a hypocrite is a person who pretends to have beliefs or practices which he or she does not actually possess. As used in the Bible, the term comes from ancient Greek theater, where one actor would often play two or more parts. When saying something humorous, he would hold up a mask with a smiley face. When playing a tragic part, he would hold up a mask with a sad face. A good actor could imitate the speech, mannerisms, and conduct of the character he was portraying. The word literally means one who hides behind a mask. One hot day when the family had guests for dinner, a mother asked her four-year-old little boy named Johnny to say the blessing for the meal. Well, Johnny didn't really want to, and he complained, Mom, I don't know what to say. Well, the mother sweetly replied in front of her guest, Oh, just, just say what you've heard me say. So obediently, Johnny bowed his head and said, Oh, Lord, why in the world did I invite these people over here anyway? <laughs> well, I want to suggest to you today that one of the reasons why there are unreal people in the church is because not all churchgoers are Christians. Going to church will not automatically change anyone's behavior. People go for all sorts of reasons, maybe out of habit or ritual, maybe to seek the truth, or perhaps just to network with other people and friends. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going into a garage makes you a car. We have to live with the possibility that what some people will perceive as hypocrisy in the church is in fact the result of mistaken identity. Some people just look like they're Christians because they get up on Sundays and they go to a place called church. Actually, this could take some of the pressure off of you who are investigating Christianity. You're not expected to act like a Christian if you're not one yet. As you seek and ask questions, don't get all caught up in what you should do or shouldn't do. Once you surrender your life to Jesus, He'll begin changing you from the inside out. You don't have to manufacture Christian behavior on your own. He'll give you the desire and the power to change after you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so some people in the church are not really Christians in the first place. So that leads to another question, doesn't it? Why does it appear that so many True Christians are not real. Well, I think it results from some confusion about what a real Christian is. In fact, as we better understand what a true Christian is, we'll have a better understanding of what a hypocrite is. I'd like to suggest three distinctives of a genuine Christian. Pay close attention. These characteristics deal with the present the past, and the future. Number one, real Christians are simply forgiven sinners. Let's start with the present. 
The first feature of a bona fide Christian is that they are actually forgiven sinners. Perhaps you've seen the bumper sticker that reads, Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven. The Bible never says that Jesus Christ's followers are perfect. It does say that those who surrender their lives to Him will be perfectly forgiven. There's a difference between being a sinner and being a hypocrite. There's an unspoken assumption that a Christian is someone who doesn't sin. Nothing could be further from the truth. In reality, it's just the opposite. 1 John 1.8 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. A hypocrite or one who wears a mask claims to be free from faults. A Christian, on the other hand, freely admits the fact that he or she is a sinner. The next verse, 1 John 1 and 9, describes the difference between a hypocrite and an honest sinner. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. A forgiven sinner consistently seeks cleansing from sin. To look at the church and see sinners is one thing. But to label the church as full of hypocrites is another thing. For you see, the church is not a hall of fame for super saints, but rather a hospital for sick sinners. The surest way to beat hypocrisy is by recognizing your sinfulness and by asking for forgiveness. Being a Christian is not necessarily always about being good. It's about being forgiven. I find it comforting to know that we all, at one point or another, we mess up. We stumble. One of the greatest Christians who ever lived was the Apostle Paul. Do you know, do you think he thought of himself as spiritually invincible? Absolutely not. He knew who he was. He writes about it in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15. It says, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Notice he doesn't say he was a sinner. He says that he still is. Since Christians are not perfect, it follows that churches are not full of perfect people. That's one of the things I like about Living Word Church. We value authenticity here. I know that I'm a sinner, and you know you're a sinner. We're a church full of forgiven failures. When you think about it, the church is the only organization around where public admission of sinfulness is a requirement for membership. This place... Living Word Church is for sinners. And if you have the courage to admit that, come on in. You are welcome to join the crowd. The first point I would like to make about real Christians is real Christians are not what they used to be. Let's now take a look at the past. The second characteristic of a real Christian is that they are not what they used to be. Some of you may look at a Christian and wonder why they behave a certain way. After all, a real Christian would never lose his temper, right? You might even think to yourself, if that's the best God can do, forget it. I expect more out of Christians. Well, instead of focusing on how far people fall short, why not think about how far they've come? 
For instance, even though I have a long way to go in several areas of my life, I'm totally different today than I was before I became a committed Christian. You see me as pastor. Those who knew me years ago see something much different. Friends, there's a lot of people like me in this church. We are a work in progress. Even though we have a long way to go, we're not what we used to be. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Those of you who have surrendered your lives to Jesus Christ have become someone new. You're not what you used to be. Point number three. Real Christians are becoming what they will be. Future tense. Let's focus now on the future. A real Christian is a forgiven sinner who has changed from how they used to be. But there's more to the story. As Paul Harvey used to say, let me give you the rest of the story. A real Christian will be transformed completely and will become perfect one day. But that's not going to happen on earth. That's not going to happen in this life. But rather it will happen at death when we are translated into His presence. That's when we will be radically changed and spend eternity with Jesus Christ. God develops the character of Christ within us and causes the fruit of the Spirit to ripen in our lives. As authentic followers of Jesus Christ, we experience forgiveness of sin and life change as we surrender to Jesus on a daily basis. Philippians 1 and 6 says, Being confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You know, that's why being a Christian gives me hope. God's not finished with me yet. I'm a work in progress. I'm not what I used to be, and I'm becoming what I shall be. Now, having said all of that, is there any hope for those who are not real? What if you're not real? What should you do? Some of the harshest words, look at this. Some of the harshest words Jesus ever spoke were directed toward professional religious pretenders. In just one speech in Matthew 23, he called them hypocrites seven times, fools twice, blind guides five times, serpents, and brood of vipers on one occasion. Now it's interesting that while Jesus was hard on hypocrites, he never condemned sinners. John 3.17 says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. In fact, Jesus embraces those who own up to their mistakes and moral failures. We think we need to put on a mask and act religious in order to gain God's favor. But Jesus says, get real. Own up to your rebellion. And if you do, I'll forgive you. Are you playing spiritual charades? Stop it. You're not fooling anyone. People can see our hypocrisy and they are turned off by it. In fact, there may be some non-Christians who have written off the church and God because of the way we've been acting. It's time to come clean, Christian. It's time to walk the walk. It's time to talk the talk and to live what you say you believe. 
The way you live your life is important. Now, if you are watching here this evening and you are investigating Christianity, you're going to see imperfect Christians. I encourage you not to make a decision on the basis of an unfinished product. God's not finished with us yet. Make your decision on the basis of the person of Jesus Christ, the only perfect one who ever lived. That's your model. That's what you're going to follow. Jesus can impact your present by forgiving you for your sins. He can make changes in your life now so that you're not what you used to be. And He will help you become what you will be by steadily chipping away at your rough spots and changing you from the inside out. I've heard people say that they would, they would be more interested in following Jesus if there weren't so many hypocrites. They don't seem to realize that if a hypocrite is standing between them and God, then the hypocrite is closer to God than they are. Think about that for a second. If a hypocrite is standing between you and God, switch places. Are you being real today? Are you trying to pretend that you have it all together? When deep inside you know that you can't keep up the act much longer? The cure for hypocrisy is not to change anything on the outside. It's not a matter of doing more things or trying to get more religious. That just perpetuates the wearing of a mask. If you want to change and if you want to truly become someone you've never been before, the change has to take place on the inside. I invite you this evening to join the ranks of forgiven sinners. You see, there's a greater temptation for hypocrisy if you don't have a way to deal with the sin in your life. For you see, if you don't know you're forgiven, you're going to spend the rest of your life trying to cover it up. Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you and change you, and you know what will happen? He will cover your sins. And when He covers them, they'll never come back and haunt you because He says that He will cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. Many years ago, a small Jewish boy asked his father, and I close with this, why must we surrender our Jewish faith and to start to attend Lutheran services here in Germany? Well, the father replied, well, son, we must abandon our faith so the people will accept us and support our business ventures. Well, you know, the young lad never got over his disappointment and bitterness at his father's attitude and statement. His faith in his father and in his religion was crushed. The lad later left Germany and went to England to study at the British Museum where he formed his philosophies for life. From those intensity, intensive investigations, he wrote a book that changed the course of the world. And that book was called The Communist Manifesto. From that book, one-third of the world fell under the spell of Marxist-Leninist ideology. The name of that little boy was Karl Marx. He influenced billions into a way of thinking that for 70 years ruined, imprisoned, and confused many lives. 
Today that system of thinking is crumbling, but only after people got a good look at its tragic consequences. The influence of this Karl Marx father's hypocrisy was multiplied a billion times over. You must understand that hypocrisy has consequences. Christians, let's get real and let's make a real difference. Let us pray. Master of the universe, Savior of our soul, we come to you tonight with thankful and grateful hearts. Thank you for speaking to us and teaching us tonight that we need to be real in all of our dealings. We need to take off all of the masks that we are wearing. And we, we need to let Jesus shine through our lives so that the world can see that there is hope in a lost and dying world, one that's getting darker and darker every day. If we hide our light or if we present a false light, people will not be convinced. They will not be fooled. Help us to let the real light of Jesus Christ shine through our lives. May it be a beacon of hope in the darkness of this lost world. We ask all of these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being here this evening. We look forward to seeing you again Sunday morning, same time, same station. Until then, God richly bless you.